Hi everyone, my name is Mali. This presentation has been brought to you by Perfect Fit Closet. Today I will be sharing custom closet expert ideas and best practices on how to maximize efficiency in order to create a cost-effective closet space. We will highlight different ideas on how to utilize closet space bearing in mind functionality and of course durability. Together we can bring your imagination to a whole new level. Closet components versus kitchen components. If you are not familiar with the 32 millimeter European style closet components, then you are most likely passing up on, closet, on custom closet projects or pricing your projects is extremely high because you are using kitchen cabinet components to create the closet space. Also, you are most likely lacking the right accessories to create an efficient space. Here are a few differences to note between closets and kitchen cabinet components. Closets do not use a box system. Closets also do not use modular systems as the design process shares panels. You will see a box system for a kitchen is already put together for you. In closets, you're not dealing with that. You're dealing with a shared panel system. The closets are designed with specific depths and heights, allowing you to maximize the space and the number of design walls used. We will discuss this further in the design portion of this presentation. You'll notice the 32 millimeter hole pattern on those panels. You'll see that on all closet panels. You have closet components offer both floating wall panels and floor panels. So you can use both on your design process and offset the cost wherever possible. This is the rail system that allows for the floating wall panels to stay up. So you're able to use shorter panels for where you have hanging. So there's no need to bring extra toe kicks and other components that add cost to the design. Closet panels offer a whole pattern to give the design and end user adjustability and options. We are going to dive into talking about hanging sections. We're going to talk about uh, various different styles you can put into a closet in order to maximize that space. And again, I'll bring attention to the 32 millimeter hole pattern and the importance of adjustability in a closet. If a client is requesting that they have no holes, that makes it a lot more difficult for them to later adjust things. So that has to be really something you communicate to them. By designing the closet with, with the right components and depths and heights, it allows for endless amounts of design possibilities. So the right amount of clothes take up the space and the provided depths and height. So the closet looks cleaner and you're controlling how much goes into that space and into those sections so that no matter how this client deals with that space, whenever they come into it, they are always going to have a very clean visual effect in place. So let's go in and talk about medium hang section. You're going to notice in a medium hang section, which is the right hand side of this image with all the dresses, you could do a lot of different things. This could be for dresses. It could be for suits for uh, a gentleman. This could be for someone who wants to hang up their pants full length. Typically, the rod will sit at about 55 inches off the ground to the bottom of the rod. And you can maximize by either adding shelves above it and or if you have space like you do in this one, you could add shelves below it. The next thing you can do in a space in a closet is you could do what we call a long hang or a single rod. In a closet, you'll see again, very similar to the medium, but it sits higher. It's going to be sitting around 65 inches off the ground, and it allows for longer item dresses to sit in this place. You could add shoes on the bottom, as you see here, with or without a shelf. You could add extra shelves for purses or foldings or even perhaps a drawer in this space. Again, depending on the inventory and what the longest item for that individual is. The other place this length of rod sits in, if you go into any home, your front reach and closet typically only has one rod. And that rod is generally sitting at that same length between 65 inches to 72 inches off the ground. And then you'll see a single shelf right above it that allows for you to have top storage for additional items. So you have medium hang, you have long hang, you have your single rod for a front entry closet or any other space that may require it. 
The next thing that you're going to have is what we call a double hang. Most closets are designed at that 84 inches height overall off the ground. Because your top rod is sitting at 80 inches off the ground, and your bottom rod is sitting at 40 inches off the ground. So you're able to put a good space between those two rods. You can even sometimes throw a shelf above the bottom rod in order to give it a cleaner look and allow, to, allow the clients to maximize that space. Again, in a, in, a, in a kitchen cabinet system, this would be a bit of a challenging thing to have. So this is why the panels with the whole patterns allow for you to have this kind of style in a most cost-effective way. The next thing we're going to talk about for hanging is triple hang. You'll see here within the 2020 uh, catalog, um, we are able to put rods at different heights. And those click right into place due to that 32 millimeter hole pattern. So we've done medium, we've done long, we've added our shelves, we have a combination of uh, floor and um, hanging gables. And now you'll see we're able to place our rods uh, typically where they're supposed to be sitting for a triple hang, which is uh, generally some sitting around the 28 to 30 inches off the ground. And you have another one sitting around 56 inches and the top one always sitting at 80. If you have a client that is vertically challenged, uh, you have to remind them that they're not reaching for the rod at the very top. They're generally reaching for the hanger. So you're able to reach uh, those items comfortably. Uh, I myself, I'm one of those vertically challenged people. I'm 5'2", and I'm able to deal with an 80-inch height, no problem. In a triple hang, it's beautiful because as your child, uh, typically they go in a child's closet, as your child is getting older, you're able to take rods away, you're able to uh, take shelves away, convert it into a long hang, convert it into a double hang, convert it into a medium hang. Whatever it is you want to do, you're able to have that adjustability. So once you build this closet once for your clients uh, or their children, then they're able to function with this space for a very, very long time efficiently. So that right there was our discussion around rod placement in a closet. Uh, we'll move on from here and we'll talk about some of the more of the luxury items that clients might want into their master closet. This is the most important space for any female client and you are going to have a lot of female clients because this is every girl's dream come true, a shoe closet. Naturally, most households will collect a lot of shoes and creating space to house them all is not something a home builder ever considers. As you know, the storage footprint in, the mo in most homes is getting smaller and smaller, so custom storage is becoming a necessity versus a luxury. For shoes, you're able to create a tower that is 14 inches deep by 18 inches wide, of course, 84 inches in height, which is your closet standard height, that, can, that holds close to 10 shelves in it depending your shoe height that you're putting into that space. Each shelf will house two pairs of shoes comfortably, allowing you to house up to two, 20 pairs of shoes in one tower. That is a lot of shoes for that space in a closet, which you normally don't typically have with your existing space. If you go wider, 24 inches wide, you can house 30, three, sorry, three pairs of shoes comfortably, allowing you to house that many shoes in a space will open up a lot of that storage space in your other closets or even your front closet for things that you may want to use day to day. Of course, you can bring less shoes in one tower by eliminating some shelves and making room for taller heels and boots. One last thing to keep in mind is if you go with slanted shoe shelves versus straight, which you'll see on the image in front of you, slanted gives it a very visually appealing look in any space. However, it will eliminate a couple of shelves for shoe storage versus straight. If you go straight, you're able to house a couple of those extra shelves into it. The visual appeal might not be there. However, the efficiency is there. Our focus is now going to be on drawers versus dressers. If you have room in your closet, it's best practice to have drawers in there in order to house uh, undergarments and such so that you can space 
open up your space in your bedroom. Adding the drawers inside the closet allows for your clothes to be in one space, as I mentioned, and it opens up your bedroom, as I mentioned again, adding value and appeal to the master closet. I am sure that a lot of these homes are purchased just by the closet's look alone because most females are looking for that. Since you're not housing heavy items in the drawers, like kitchen items, you can bring different heights and widths into the space. You can house undergarments, jewelry, sporting gear, scarves, folded items. All of that can go inside your drawers. In our design, we're using Baltic birch dovetail with undermount soft close slides. However, you can bring in melamine drawers into the space as well to help save further cost for the project, giving it a very sturdy, clean look. Your slides are able to hold up to 50 pounds per slide. And again, as I mentioned, your closet looks more pulled together with keeping all your items in one space. You'll see here a combination of what we've been talking about so far, your hanging, your shelves, your panels, your drawer boxes. You can just start seeing how these various components work and complement each other. A very slick way to see it and show your clients. Your drawers pop open. You see hangers on the rods. It's a very clean look to showcase to the end user what that space could potentially look like. I'm going to show the image to you one last time, and we're going to move on to the next items on the list here as well. We have 12-inch drawer on the bottom, and we have three 9-inch drawers at the very top of each tower, bringing it to a nice countertop height, which is accessible by, again, uh, someone like myself who's vertically challenged, and you're able to see that space come together. No slides on the sides, very clean, finished look. That is your drawers versus dressers option for your clients. Accessories jazz up any space, and closets have the avail availability to some really cool gadgets. Keep in mind that accessories come with specific dimensions, typically 14 inch deep by 18 inch, 24, or 30 inch wide, plus the various heights that may be offered in, depending on the accessory you're selecting. If you are ever creating a wardrobe system for your clients and it sits 24 inches deep, you can still utilize these accessories by installing the piece closer to the front of the unit and creating a dead space in the back. The following accessories are commonly used in closets. We're going to talk about the valet rod. This is also referred to as a telescopic rod. It's great for planning your outfit for the next day, hanging up dry cleaning that needs to go out or come in. Great accessories, and it goes almost in all closets that I've ever designed. Belt rack is the next one. Clients love to have these for scarves, for belts. Good way to clean things out. It slides right out, slides right back in. It's hidden. It's a fantastic way of storing these items. Jewelry tray is another big hit. Goes into the top section of the tower where your drawers are sitting allows for watches, for important documents like passports, rings, necklaces, bracelets, all of those things can go into this. Cleans up that space really well, keeps your stuff in one place. Slide out pan rack is another great one. Clients love this. Men with suits love this. Houses almost close to a dozen plus pairs of pants on one slide out component. Cleans it right up, keeps it wrinkle free. Great way to uh, maximize the space. Hampers is another good one. Instead of having something sit inside your bedroom, sits right in the closet, you're able to pull the hamper right out, take it to the washer dryer, bring it right back. The other alternative to uh, drawers is wire baskets, if you want to go that route. Allows for things to breathe, so it's great for gym clothing uh, or shoes or kid space. Wire baskets. Perfect way to bring it into the space and clean it up. Wardrobe lifts are also uh, becoming more and more uh, a necessity for clients who are either wanting to use it for taller ceilings where they can store seasonal clothing and pull the handle and bring it right down. It's an automatic 
system that comes down and then you give it a nice push and it goes right back up very slowly. It's also great if you're dealing with clients who may uh, need something to be accessible a lot easier. If they're sitting in a wheelchair, you could put it at the top of the double hang and utilize it to maximize that space for them as well. Civil mirror is another item that we put into closets uh, where you're able to hide it. So it slides out and tilts uh, to whatever angle you want it, and then it slides right back in. The other, the other area where you can get creative as a designer is the back wall. If you look at this space, unlike kitchen cabinets, closets, the wall is exposed. With that, you're able to put have a blank canvas to put anything into that space. So you could put a decorative color, like a painted a different color, put a wallpaper into that. It allows for you to have a very feature wall that is very uh, appealing to clients. It's a great way to get creative. We are going to recap all the different areas that we touched on today briefly, and we're going to wrap up our presentation. Uh, we appreciate your time. And we hope this was very informational for you. So let's go from the beginning. As I had mentioned, you'll see here the closet components versus kitchen components that we discussed. You will notice in closets you're dealing with the 32 millimeter uh, European style hole pattern. You have the option of floating uh, sorry, wall gable versus floor panels, followed by the various hanging options that we've given you. You'll notice there's a combination of double hang, medium hang, long hang that we put into this design in front of you, followed by uh, the shoes that we talked about. We have shoe shelving for shoes. You could do slanted versus straight shelves. You'll see a combination of straight shelves here where you can add additional shelving to be able to store more shoes. We added doors onto this design, which you will see in the perspective view once we switch it over for you guys. We also added a combination of the slide up hand rack accessory followed by hamper, wire baskets, and a few drawers. So this closet that we've designed with you today, uh, talking about the various spaces, gives you a full uh, view of what a space typically looks like when you're going into a home and creating a custom closet for that client. You will notice that a project like this, uh, depending on whether you're in the US or you're in Canada, can run you from an estimated $1,500 up depending on how much accessories you bring in, uh, what components you're bringing into it, this is what it would look like. 14 inches deep, 84 inches height is your height you want to focus on when building closets. Of course, every other space of the home that you do will have different dimensions that are meant for that space. But in a closet, you're dealing with 14 inches deep, 84 inches height, combination of drawers, accessories, makes it a very perfect custom closet that is functional and adjustable and cost effective. Thank you for watching our presentation. Uh, good luck with your next closet design, and we hope this was informational for you. Have a wonderful day.